Welcome back. It's at Ballot 2023 from Plus TV Africa. My name is Justin Akadinho. We're giving you uh, all the details uh, concerning uh, the presidential election, of course, uh, the National Assembly elections uh, as um, you know, daybreak. Uh, you can just uh, count on us. But we have uh, a guest that uh, joined us via Zoom all the way from Lekki here in Lagos, uh, Mr. Bayo Oluwake. Thanks for joining us on the Ballot 2023. Thank you for having me, and uh, good afternoon, viewers. All right, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's just start from you. I'm sure you um, have uh, been following the exercise. Uh, did you cast your vote already? Well, um, I didn't vote because I just returned to the country a couple of months ago, so I was not around when the registration was being done. But I've been quite excited uh, at what I've seen. There's been a lot of um, favor uh, across the country, People are very much excited about the elections. Uh, and of course, we cannot but mention the renewed interest, especially of young people, considering that in the past elections that we witnessed, they've always not been particularly excited. So I think there are a lot of positives to take uh, from this current election as we watch and see how it eventually uh, unfolds. Uh, Boy, uh, from the reports uh, that we have seen so far, most of the uh, presidential candidates have um, indeed cast their ballot. Uh, uh, the APC presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tudubu, did uh, just um, uh, a few hours ago uh, around um, Alausa in Ikeja. Also, uh, Peter B uh, also cast his ballot in a number of states. But so far, what we hear is that... Uh, People are excited, but uh, in some places, uh, reports that we got, uh, the elections did quite start as they should, as in on time. That is, uh, did that come to you as a surprise? It didn't come to me as a surprise, uh, in the sense that um, we've always had these kinds of issues around elections. Um, as a journalist, I covered the 1979 elections, uh, when the military returned to power. I was very, very young, a uh, very young reporter. Uh, and I've always, of course, shown an interest in subsequent elections ever since. Um, what will, uh, you know, I would like to express the disquiet, though, that at this stage, we shouldn't be having this kind of problems. So while it's not a surprise to me, I am not happy because we should no longer be having this kind of problems. I don't think elections should be, you know, they should just be routine, you know. They should be routine. There should be nothing particularly uh, difficult uh, about that. And because I know that, for example, for each polling station, there's usually a backup to the electoral staff that, that are deployed. You know, there's always a plan that if one or two don't show up, they can easily cover up with another two on standby and things like that. So I am, I am, you know, not happy, even though it's not a surprise. Okay, uh, still reports uh, reaching us indicate that some people had a bit of confusion earlier today as regards their polling unit. They went to where they were supposed to vote, uh, but when they got there, uh, they said their unit uh, or polling wards have been moved to other places. Uh, so how does that really hit you? Um, not too well, but, but then we need to look at this from two perspectives, uh, because I think we need to get the context. INEC had actually asked people to double check where they're supposed to be voting before the election itself. Um, we also heard that some voters were moved away, and INEC was quite clear about this, that some voters have been moved to other polling units. Um, now, because we don't have the full information, it's difficult to say if these people had previously checked where they were supposed to be voting before today, or if they assume that since they've always voted in a particular polling booth, then that's exactly where they are still going to vote today. You know, so this is the uh, lack of clarity that I have. But if people checked where they were supposed to vote and actually went there and then are not being allowed to vote, then that's a different matter entirely. Okay, so you wouldn't really say it is the fault of the electoral umpire, but would you say enough sensitization and education you know, was made um, uh, for the voters? Um, no, I believe we could have done more. Uh, I mean, with, without prejudice to, to INEC. And I don't actually think this is just an INEC issue, to be honest. 
I think the National Orientation Agency um, should have done a lot more work. Uh, and if you if you notice in the build up to these elections, a lot of commentators had expressed on you know their um, you know uh, the, how do I say that a lot of commentators had not been happy that we've not been hearing about the National Orientation Agency. Some are even wondering if it's still existing. Because usually when we build up to elections, it's a National Orientation Agency that complements the efforts of INEC to sensitize people to voting uh, and to registration and so on and so forth. But the National Orientation Agency has been completely out of business, so to speak, in the build up to this election. And I think this could account for why we are having some of this confusion. Because INEC has its hands already filled with trying to get the register put in place, trying to sort out a lot of logistical issues, trying to mobilize security agencies, that the question of mobilizing people, I believe, should have squarely fallen on the shoulders of the National Orientation Agency. But they've been away without leave, so to speak. We haven't seen that. All right, Bayer, let's talk about um, the level of security that has been deployed uh, to a polling um, unit across uh, the country because the Inspector General of Police just yesterday assured Nigerians that uh, you know, the polls would be as secure as possible. But we are getting reports that are uh, indicating uh, something uh, completely different right now because uh, one would have thought uh, that some hotbed, some hotspot uh, uh, would have been given more uh, deployment as it is. Uh, for reports uh, reaching us uh, indicate that uh, around um, Osho, the Isolo axis, uh, there's been uh, a bit of commotion and some people were actually uh, being uh, forced to vote, uh, although it's alleged, uh, we've not really confirmed though, they said that people are being forced to vote some, for some political party. And right now what we hear is that around Kale Close, or Oshini, uh, the uh, report of uh, a bit of uh, people fighting at um, the electoral, um, the polling unit. Um, how should we have been able to tackle this before now? Um, personally, I have always expressed a bit of worry uh, about our policing. And this is not blaming the IG or anybody now. This is just reality, something we've carried on, I think, ever since President Obasanjo left office. Uh, the size of the police and the sheer number of police officers who are performing what, they, what is called VIP escort duties. Um, according to read publications some months ago, almost 150,000 police officers were, be, were performing VIP escort duties. But from, from what the IGP said before this election, uh, most police officers have been withdrawn from non sensitive duties. So I know that the police have tried to close the gaps. But even at that, we have over 170,000 polling units for the presidential election. And if you have to deploy at least two police officers to each polling unit, that is over 170,000 times two. So do we have that number of police officers to deploy? Of course, this will be complemented by civil defense and so on and so forth. You know, and of course, voters themselves will ensure, you know, amongst themselves that everybody is orderly and complies. But the people who are determined to make trouble come to a polling unit, you actually need the police. Now, the military has been deployed to, to man sensitive areas so that there can be enough police officers at the polling units. Because you cannot, there's no country where you keep the military in polling units, it's always the police, you know, and usually they are not supposed to be armed in polling units according to international best practices. So given the peculiarity of the Nigerian situation, I feel that a lot more, uh, it's, it's just about 12, 30 something. So a lot more can still be done to improve the security situation. And I hope that the authorities are monitoring and following and will do just that. Okay, let's move away from a security situation and still talk about um, the electoral umpire that is under Independence National Electoral Commission. So far, uh, uh, accreditation and um, voting uh, was done at most polling units, uh, and um, a lot of people are actually very excited, and they said that the process so far have been smooth. Would you really say uh, this particular style uh, of voting should be what we should be going forward with? No, absolutely, absolutely. 
there are a lot of lessons to take from the 2023 elections, not just the voting going on today, but the build up to this election, the, all the issues around voter registration, the issues around collection of PVCs, there are a lot of lessons to take going forward. And I'm hoping that after this round of elections, we can totally simplify voters' registration, for instance. The day you turn 18, you're just supposed to walk into the INEC office and register and get your voter's card, not to wait until there's an election. That way we will completely remove all these bottlenecks that we keep having when we have elections. But as we know as well, INEC has been learning from previous elections. The BVAS machine, which has been used for accreditation uh, for this particular election, is a product of the experience that INEC has had from previous elections. And we need to commend them for that. You know, I think on top of it all, the success of any election, you know, and the successes that we achieve, you know, uh, 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 in this particular one, um, we, in going forward with those, everyone, every, everyone is a stakeholder, and we all should ensure that we don't fall back, you know, below the standards that are not good enough and that we have left behind. Voting has commenced, uh, thankfully, but I do hope that INEC is taking note of all these things and might need to extend the voting time in some of these places or generally because the materials uh, either arrived late or the BVAS, which is also an INEC uh, um, thing, uh, didn't work well initially in some places that they may even have gone early and all that. I hope they're taking note and have made provisions for extension in the areas where things began really late. Uh, maybe you you have a comment uh, on that. Like I've, I've said severally, we're, we're, we're reactive and not proactive. Mm. What we're experiencing today shouldn't actually be happening. INEC should be prepared. Mm. And that preparedness is to ensure that these materials arrive, usually the materials should arrive a day before. And working. And working. So, you know, these excuses are part of the reasons why a lot of people get disenfranchised, a lot of people don't come out to vote. Because time means a lot to a lot of people. If you say you're going to start voting by 8, I expect that by as early as 6, 7, everything is set. How can you be pasting names by 9, 10, and you want people to come and confirm their names? It's, it's, it's like we keep going backwards. We're still in the Stone Age. We're not taking advantage of modern technology. And I don't know why we're not doing that. We should, as of today, as of today, we shouldn't even be talking about where is my pooling unit. unit. It boils down to the fact that INEC, just like most Nigerians, has concentrated on social media, forgetting that the people in the rural areas are not on social media. And this is where I keep saying the National Orientation Agency, the various state ministry of information, and the INEC itself, the education unit of INEC, should have been out there educating people, informing people, carrying the Nigerian people along. The Nigerian people today are hungry for a government that they can hold accountable. And that government you can hold accountable is a government you elect into office. If you don't elect someone into office, you can't hold the person accountable. So this whole thing that we keep going, you know, in circles, you know, it's not helping this country. It's, it's not really helping this country. To some of us, it is annoying. You know, it is painful. It is sad. But this is what happened in the last election. Materials didn't arrive on time. People didn't know where they were going to vote. It is repeating itself. When will this come to an end? Uh, quickly, we have uh, mm. less than two minutes to, you know, take a break now. Mm. But... Uh, Kola mm. let's talk about the beavers. Yeah. Uh, from the report we got from Cross River State, that, you know, to some extent, the beavers were not functional mm. and they were not working up until the attention of uh, some persons were called and then they started working. What exactly could be wrong with these very precious beavers mm. that we are really and highly dependent on? Don't forget, 2015, they were also complaining of the smart card readers not mm. functioning. Mm. Could it be, um, because we don't know, but I'm just asking, could it be technical man, manpower issue, like uh, no technical knowledge of how to operate it? What exactly <laughs> could we be dealing with? I think We're just trying to. I think it's a know. function of all that. Like all machines, they are prone to break down when uh, least uh, expected. Mm -hmm. uh, it could also be even network problems because the beaver is supposed to be linked to some server somewhere. 
And if the network is poor in that area in which the viva is located and all that, it will not be functioning properly. And of course, too, INEC never had the time and enough space and the resources. Time? To train. But they said they had enough time. Why do I say this? An INEC official. Wait, why do I say this? I'm aware that 24 hours before this election, the chairman of INEC, Professor uh, Mamu no. Yoko Mamudo, was still going to the CBN governor to beg for money. We need to give to some of these ad hoc staffs to train and then to mobilize them and to carry material from one destination to the other. In fact, it is a miracle. I have been saying maybe this election might not even hold because the resources were not there. You have the fuel crisis. You also have this narrow redesigning uh, policy which has crippled almost every facet of our life. That I like is able to do this in my own pool of, you know. They were given d direct money from CBN. I, I, I think yeah. this is where, this is where I like to disagree with 24 you. 24 hours. No, no, this time. is where I like to disagree yeah. with you. We always want to give excuses mm. for ineptitude, yeah. for laziness, for lack of competence. INEC has no problem when it comes to funding. INEC should not even complain no, they about logistics. No, yeah, they, they shouldn't they complain. They yeah. should not complain because INEC should not be affected with the financial situation on ground because they have a responsibility to deliver to Nigerians. They, as far as I'm concerned, they have become the bride overnight. So this whole idea of every time we have election, you will see INEC talking about money. They, when they want to spend money building structures, they don't tell Nigerians they don't have money. When they want to spend money going abroad for all sorts of training, they don't tell Nigerians they don't have money. We must stop this idea of holding responsibility or taking responsibility but for please, people's failure. Are you, I will aware, not be a party to that. are you aware there was a meeting between the CBN governor and then the chairman? I mean, the yeah, agent. but in that meeting, and what the, was the request? Which the, I read, which I saw, the INEC were promised that they would be given they cash the and they were they, they confirmed that they, they, they confirmed the they the it was at the right time they got the money. But was you see, right a, apart from you know the allocated budget for this election, yes. INEC gets you know a certain annual, which is not part of the money. No, they get an annual that. allowance. So on what paper, exactly? Money, when you say time, paper, how much time are we talking about? INEC on paper, but releasing the money at the appropriate time and. Uh, but you know, in all of the things that I INEC compared, I, I, I INEC complained about, let's be realistic. I yes. mean, we have been very vocal. Yeah. We have been taught that we can't be docile as a people. And yeah. then we have seen Nigerians engaging and speaking out, you know. And we have seen that people that have been responsible to some of the actions. Now, one of the things that I remember vividly... Yeah. INEC complaining about was the security situation in the country. They, they talked about, about they, they, they really talked about what they were very vocal about sat, was that the security sat. situation was a major concern for them, exactly, especially yeah, when there have been several attacks on their facility. As a matter of fact, the chairman of INEC, it's in public domain, and he said, this election, we are going to raise the bar. It's going to be different. He also made reference to the fact that logistics has always been a major issue, but 2023 will be different. So, yes, the Beavers, I mean, we had elections that we had, you call them trial elections. The Oshun State elections, we saw the performance of the Beavers. We never heard that the Beavers had functionality issues. So what exactly are we hearing that Beavers didn't work? Could it, what exactly is wrong? Technical issues? Is it that the people don't know how to operate these Beavers? Because we can continue like this every other time and hope for a different outcome. Let me give you an example. The antenna with which the service provider, those, the MTN, the... Starlink. Air they're not using power. that. We are you using know, Starlink. Wait, do you know that most of those the antennas are powered by generator? And they probably will put this in those things and all that. So if, for example, in the location where the Bible is to be used and which there must be some uh, connectivity and all that, the antenna, they don't have ordinary fuel to okay, power Okay, okay. I, I, I understand where you're <laughs> coming from. Let's, let's, go to, let's move now to Kogi State, <clears throat> uh, where we have Nathaniel uh, standing back. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure having me. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. you are in Kogi State. Tell us what is going on right now. Uh, yeah, at the moment, Kogi State is peaceful. Elections have started. Accreditations are taking place with um, uh, a massive, uh, a quite a number of appreciable people who turn out to uh, cast their ballot. Um, as we speak uh, across Kogi State, from the reports we have also gathered, and um, be also on the on the field. We rightly observed that uh, um, accreditations across the states, 
took place between 8.30 and 9 p.m. And um, for exceptional places where uh, we recorded a delay in you know, uh, uh, accreditations and uh, uh, voting processes are quite minimal. And um, as we speak, voting is progressing uh, gradually, and uh, quite a number of people are turning up for the, to, to, to be accredited and to eventually vote. And of course, the beavers uh, is cooperating. Where we have cases of beavers not really working, um, uh, we see how it was managed properly, and then the accreditations also take place in such places. However, we still also have some issues around some places uh, in, in Ajakuta local government precisely, where uh, as at 11 p uh, 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 noon, um, both of the line officials have not even resumed in most of the polling units around Ganaja, uh, Old Poly Quarters, and the uh, Gadmore areas put together. And uh, we are still in touch with INEC to see how that could also be resolved. However, as we speak to you, um, the voting is progressing gradually and people are turning up to vote. Is that in Kogi? Where are you standing right now and talking with us? Yes, I am standing in one of the local government precisely as I speak to you. I am in Pata Ward in Basa local government area of Kogi State. Pata Ward is the collection center for the, the, uh, the, all the uh, uh, polling units around the world. And um, I just have to move a distance a bit from the polling unit because within the polling unit, the network is not too strong. So I needed to move down into the part of the community to, so that I can be able to okay. speak with you at the moment. However, in, 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 in that same polling unit, uh, quite a number of issues came up but were addressed. Uh, and of course, you know, in this election, despite the issues of the, um, the Naira swap and the withdrawal limits, issues of vote buying is still finding its way into the system. And uh, for the first time, we'll be seeing people voting, uh, they probably voting and then putting down their names in such a way that uh, at maybe later time, they could be paid for their vote. I think these are the things virtually going on. And of course, from also, um, I am the one particularly in charge of Kogi Eastern Senatorial District of German Election Era. And of course, some of our observers deployed into other areas have also been feeding us back with issues and challenges of uh, a calculated, uh, a new dimension of how vote buying could also be achieved in this election. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, we understand that uh, President Buhari has cast his vote in Daura polling unit. Uh, I don't know if we have that footage. We'll play it a little bit later. But I want to stay with you, uh, Nathaniel. Uh, we heard reports before now. You are in Kogi, so we want to confirm. We heard reports that there are some places that because of the way the road is right now, uh, INEC materials may not even get to that place. We, even though in the story it was like the uh, political rival of the governor uh, is living in that place and possibly the road was made in that way so that INEC will not get there. But we would like to confirm from you, do you have any report like that on ground that there are some places that yeah. may not be accessible? Yes, uh, as at the year Yesterday, when that story surfaced, uh, we took our time to see how we can check that story. And eventually, we discovered that the story was actually true because even the state government have to come up with um, excuses of um, trying to curb security. Yeah. I don't see any reason why cutting off a road has to do with curbing security. But that is on the other side. Um, the one of the frontline uh, uh, contestants in the uh, 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 under the PDP, that is Natasha Akotiodua, uh, uh, came up clearly to state and even show how the roads leading to her areas were cut off. Um, 
uh, I don't see how that has to do with um, security as we speak. But however, um, I think there were one or two measures that were put in place to see how uh, materials could also get to uh, those polling units. But as we speak, the same senatorial district is where I also I reported that materials have not been able to reach one of the places very close to Lokoja, the state capital. If you see the proximity between Ganaja, Old Poly Quarters, and Gadumo areas of Kogi State, it's just a stone throw from Kogi State capital, uh, uh, Lokoja. But yet, as I speak to you, I'm still confirming to you that materials have not reached those areas. Although it's coming from the local government headquarters, since INEC have been able to move the materials to the INEC headquarters. But I have you precisely where this incident of road cutting and what have you just took place. It's not an excuse to curb security. Probably it could be another strategy to see how materials will not get there. But however, as at yesterday, I think um, the, the senatorial candidate of uh, uh, police central was able to to peel part of the rules that were thought of. And we saw them in the video uh, footage where the bulldozers were used in, in covering those places so that materials could be moved up to that place. But however, I, as I speak to you, I'm yet to get in touch with one of our correspondents, our, okay. our observers that were deployed in that place. But quite a number of them have reported right. that voting and accreditation have also started in some of those areas. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.